Welcome to day one of Every Nation's annual week of prayer, fasting, and consecration. The rest of this week, we will be looking at attributes of God, and our prayer is that we will all come to a deeper understanding of God's greatness and His goodness. And this fresh revelation of Him will lead us to worship, holiness, and mission. Around this time last year, on January 24th, 2020, one of the world's most famous Renaissance paintings, the Ghent Altarpiece by Van Eyck, was about to be unveiled to the world after an eight-year, multi-million dollar restoration effort by Belgium's Royal Institute for Cultural Heritage. However, the unveiling of the massive altarpiece was spoiled when photos of the newly restored work were leaked on Twitter. You can see them behind me. Immediately, both art critics and Twitter critics began commenting on the centerpiece of the massive altarpiece, a painting called The Adoration of the Mystic Lamb. In particular, commenters on Twitter were horrified with what appeared to be a botched restoration project when they compared the face of the lamb in the pre-restoration version, which is on the left, which looks like a normal lamb, and the post-restoration version on the right, which looks, which one art critic called a freakishly humanoid lamb. The annoyed art director of the project, Ellen Dubois, quickly explained that the restoration was not botched, but rather in the process of restoring the painting, they made a discovery. When they were carefully scraping away layers of dirt and even paint from the canvas, the team discovered that in an earlier restoration project in the 1500s, someone had painted over and changed the face of the lamb originally painted in 1432 in order to make it look more anatomically correct. So it turns out that the face of the mystical lamb that the world had known for almost 500 years was not the one that Van Eyck had painted in 1432. In 2020, we were getting to see for the first time what it looked like when it was originally painted. In this annual week of prayer, fasting, and consecration, where we'll be meditating on the character and nature of God, I think it's appropriate to acknowledge that most of us are like those art critics on Twitter. We'd prefer to keep our generic and familiar images of God. We want the generic lamb, not the mystic lamb. We want the God of our imagination, what we learned in Sunday school, but not the God of the Bible. If we were really honest with ourselves, we'd rather not engage in a restoration project of this nature. We'd rather not scrape away the paint from our cultural notions of God, because if we do, we might not like what we see. We might not like the implications of encountering a holy God who is wholly other. In Exodus 15, the Israelites have just miraculously passed the Red Sea, and on the other side, Moses and Miriam sang a song, Deliverance. In verses 11 through 13, they paint for us a picture of the God who first appeared to Moses in the burning bush and who had just split the waters of the Red Sea. Verse 11, it says, Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand. The earth swallowed them. You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. In these few verses, Moses and Miriam pose a rhetorical question that is frequently asked throughout Scripture. Who is like our God? This rhetorical question is asked at least 16 times in seven different books of the Bible, and the answer, whether stated or implied, is always the same. There is no one like our God. Then Moses and Miriam go on to identify at least three different ways to see God's transcendence, His otherness. In verse 11, they point to God's majestic holiness. When we talk about God's holiness, it's important to point out that the writers are not merely or even primarily referring to God's moral excellence. That idea is certainly part of it, but they are mostly referring to God's essential otherness. God is wholly other. He exists on a plane of existence so incomparable, not only to other humans, but to any other God. He is the uncreated creator, and we are His creatures. And when we see Him for who He really is, we see the majesty or beauty of His holiness. We, like Moses and Miriam, should be thankful that God is not like us. Why? Because not only is God majestic in holiness, but He's perfect in His justice. We see this in verse 12. Here, Moses and Miriam refer to God stretching out His right hand against His enemies, in this case, Egypt, and the earth swallowing them up. If we read the rest of Moses and Miriam's song, we are reminded that God saw the suffering of the people of Israel. He heard their cries, and in His time, He delivered His people and executed justice toward their oppressors, the Egyptians. However, the song doesn't stop there, but offers us the most important aspect of God's transcendence in verse 13. You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. In these three short verses, we see God's transcendence and His majestic holiness, 
and His perfect justice. But most importantly, we see God's transcendence in His redemptive love. If we have the first two without the last, then none of us are making it to the other side of the Red Sea. Moses and Miriam knew that the most transcendent and otherworldly aspect of God's character was His redemptive love. A love that saw them in their suffering, redeemed them from their bondage, and led them into a covenant relationship with Him, despite their unfaithfulness. In light of this, they could say with confidence, there is no one like our God. Let's pray. Lord, you are holy, you are just, you are loving. There is no one like you. Thank you for revealing your holiness, justice, and love in the face of Jesus. May we look to him today and see him for who he really is. Scrape away all of our generic and comfortable notions of who you are and fill us afresh with awe and wonder. And may this lead to worship, holiness, and mission today. In Jesus' name, amen.